Hi everyone, this is Mama Ruru, and I just wanted to share with you a few ideas I had for my SpongeBob birthday party I threw for my son not too long ago. It was horrendous trying to find any decorations whatsoever for this birthday party. I kind of had to wing it, make a lot of DIY things. Either the decorations I found were astronomically expensive or they just didn't have a whole lot to pick from. At Party City here where I live, they didn't have like any SpongeBob at all. They had a luau section, but it was kind of pricey. So I got lucky with a few things that I found and here I just wanted to share with you what was helpful in case your son or anybody in your family likes SpongeBob. Um, so to start, I just wanted to talk about on this slide was mainly the fact that we had to do this at, I think, the SMB. It was about 30 minutes away, so it wasn't too bad. But I did not reserve the place in advance long enough. So last minute, <laughs> I reserved a room. It was kind of far away, but I was just thankful that we were able to reserve a place for it. So on this next slide, this is just an up close image of what the party looked like, the layout. The middle table is just a blue tablecloth that I got at the dollar store for a dollar. The pineapple I found at Party City, it was a dollar and 90 cents on clearance. I got really lucky with that one. The yellow and pink tablecloths were also at the dollar store for a dollar a piece. And I found a SpongeBob face and a Patrick face. I printed off the internet and just slapped it on the front of each table. I could have done a little bit better of a job with this, but I was really on a time crunch with school and everything going on. So the flowers, I'm going to talk about those. I don't really have an up close image of those flowers, but the flowers on the walls, I wanted to do some that were green, blue, purple. I just didn't have a lot of time. So I just ended up doing pink. I got a pink tablecloth from the dollar store for a dollar, and I just traced out the squiggly flower line with the permanent marker, and I cut them out. My husband ended up help me, helping me hang these up with some regular scotch tape, and luckily it held up on the wall. And I just placed everything out the way it is here because I always like to have one table in the center for when kids do games and I like to have a present table and a food table. And that back wall was the biggest wall I thought was the focal point right when you walk in you could see. And I wanted that to be the wall that you could take pictures on. And I didn't notice this at first when I did it, but like if you look at the poster, you'll see a yellow SpongeBob picture and then a pink Patrick picture. And I did by accident the yellow table with the yellow pineapple on the same side as the yellow SpongeBob picture. And same as the other side, the pink SpongeBob, sorry, pink Patrick tablecloth is on the pink jellyfish side with the pink Patrick star picture on the poster. And it just kind of worked out funny. This is an up close image of the jellyfish that I made. I found these lanterns on clearance at Party City. I think it was um, $5 for a pack of three of them, which I got really lucky. I know the jellyfish on SpongeBob have those different colored spots on them. So I just kind of took a dark pink marker and just drew them on myself. The ribbon I used came from Walmart. I used one kind of frilly light pink ribbon and then I, I hot glued it around the base and then I used a dark pink, light pink, and silver ribbon from Walmart. I think they were $3 a piece. And if you get that balloon string, it works out much better. It's a lot cheaper. You get a lot more for your money. It's just that roll of like that twine that wraps around a balloon. And then you can anchor it with some kind of block or something. They're on the balloon aisle in the party aisle at Walmart. And that's what they ended up doing because I ran out of ribbon on after two jellyfish and I didn't want to keep paying three dollars for a roll of ribbon. So anyways, um, the seaweed on this picture is just green streamer I got from the dollar store for a dollar. I taped it at the bottom. I just twisted it as I was going up and then I taped it at the top and ripped it off. It was really easy. And then um, the jellyfish poster the Jellyfish Fields poster, I just used these letter um, templates that I have. I got them in a pack 
of, I think, 50 letters and a few numbers at the dollar store, of course, a dollar. And I just used a level I, with lightly with a light colored pencil. I drew a line with a yardstick um, so the jellyfish letters would line up evenly. And then I used the stencils to trace out the lines. And then I went over with some paint. I got a little 50 cent tube of paint from Walmart on the craft aisle. If you go to Hobby Lobby, they're like $1.50, $1.75, some are even $3. If you go to Michael's, they're even more expensive. If you go to Walmart, they're 50 cents for a little tiny tube of whatever color you want. So I just got red and then I used a yardstick and I used a permanent marker. I literally just measured out and tried to draw straight lines for to make it look like boards. And then I used a permanent marker just to make little, I don't know if it looks like wood, but it's supposed to look like wood. And I just do little squiggly lines and then little circles here and there to look like the engravings inside of a wood plank. And then the net that we used for jellyfish fishing um, came from Walmart. It was $6.99. Wasn't that bad considering I was not thinking I was gonna get a net that big and that cheap. The alternative was just using a pool net that my mom had laying around in her garage, which was nowhere near what I needed or the size of the jellyfish to actually capture one. And this actually turned out to be a really fun game. The kids loved it. I hung up these jellyfish using the twine, the balloon twine that I had so much extra of. And I hung them up at all different levels and heights. And it was meant to be so that my daughter, who is three, and then my niece, who is the oldest, all different heights could all reach a jellyfish for this game but it ended up working out perfectly because it also looked visually better here is the food table we did Krabby Patty cupcakes they came from Walmart and she priced me out as just regular cupcakes so I believe they were only $13 to have 24 Krabby Patty cupcakes and this was something that I saw advertised on the Walmart Facebook page that they did over the summertime. And she said that she, they could still do them, even though that it's not something they've been doing all year. And then I still thought he should have some kind of cake um, to blow out a candle on. So I just got him a little smash cake. And um, I was impressed because I did not design that. I told her, I trust your judgment. Please just surprise me with something in SpongeBob related themes. And she did. I thought it looked amazing. And then these little note cards you see on the table here, it's literally just an index card. And then there's another index card folded in half and taped to the back of it to help it stand up. And they're just for the kids to see. This is the order that the Krabby Patty is supposed to go in. And this is a picture of SpongeBob actually making the Krabby Patties, which my son was so impressed by these. Oh, and the, the pizza, he loves pizza. My son is obsessed with pizza. He always has to have pizza. And it just worked out because SpongeBob actually has an episode where he delivers pizza with Squidward. So that worked out in my favor. And I put a little index card over by the pizza that is just a picture of SpongeBob delivering the pizza so that people could know that this does relate to the party. Here is another game that we did. It is make your own cookie Krabby Patties. This is a picture of my niece and her Krabby Patty that she made. She's amazing and wonderful. And if you look above my hand, you will see little tiny skinny icing bottles. Those icing bottles, they came in like a pack of four different colors, um, also from the dollar store. They're usually like $2 um, or $1.50. The cookies that are tan are vanilla wafers, and the other cookies are chocolate-covered graham cracker cookies that were supposed to be small little circular cookies, which would have worked out much better but they ended up being bigger square cookies. So we just kind of made it work. I broke them in fours to make them the right size and it worked out, but in the future, I would have done the smaller circular cookies. I just didn't realize that that's what I was buying. I was in a hurry that day, but it worked out. And the kids had a lot of fun with this craft and then they even ate them all after they were done. Lots of sugar. And here is one of my favorite things. It is the SpongeBob present table but it's also the photo wall. I used the, a fishing net that came from Hobby Lobby. And then in one of the SpongeBob episodes, it says best day ever. And it's all about SpongeBob making a song um, for Squidward. And then there, I think there's the friend song, F is for friends who do stuff together. 
anyways so i found that randomly at the dollar store best day ever and it was just by itself literally for 50 cents on the clearance aisle no idea where it came from or why but it was amazing that i found it the clothespins i got at the dollar store for 97 cents and i just got a picture of each month of that year so i originally just had 12 pictures one for halloween one for christmas like all, one for each month of, of the year and then a bunch of other pictures i found that i thought were just so cute i had to have them on the wall so those are the three at the bottom and then here is a bikini bottom design i tried to do myself um the the words the writing isn't the best but i tried i just used a permanent marker and wrote it on and then i got red streamer at the dollar store and just wrapped it around four different corners and then taped it on the back so you wouldn't see the tape and then the actual foam wreath insert I got came from Hobby Lobby, I think, for $4.99. So it wasn't that bad. And then here is the biggest part of the whole birthday. It was the part that I worked the hardest on. It is the pineapple. And I didn't know how I was going to do this. I thought I was going to get like all these different poster boards and like try to staple them or glue them together. I don't know what I was going to do. But I went to Hobby Lobby for other things and ended up finding this giant poster board for $4.99 at Hobby Lobby. It was amazing. So I got a smaller 50 cent poster board also at Hobby Lobby for the pineapple top. I stapled it on. And then on the back of it, I bought these little sticks. They're probably about two feet and some are four feet long. They come from Walmart. On the craft aisle, there's a little bin and like depending on how thick they are, the smallest sticks are like maybe 15 cents and the really thick sticks that are long are probably like, you know, 50 cents or 70 cents a piece. And I only needed, I think one, two, four of them. Yeah, I say I only need four of them. No, five, I used five of them, sorry. Um, my husband helped me get the pineapple to stand up using the sticks. We taped um, two of them to the back of the pineapple to make it stand up straight, and the one between the pineapple and the stem, the leaves of the pineapple, to make it stand up straight. And then we used two of them going on each side of the pineapple and taping them to the floor so it would stay in place. The reason we had to do that was because if you look at the image where I drew the pineapple, um, I don't know if you can see the creases or not, but this is actually a presentation board and that's why it's so big. And because it's a presentation board, it's folded on two sides and I couldn't get it to stay unfolded or stand up straight, but it kind of came in handy. I found those little sticks. It was only maybe like $2 for all the sticks. And then um, we just used tape. We used, I think, duct tape, taped them to the back to make it stand up. And then a couple of times it moved, but it wasn't that bad. They moved on the floor but my husband helped me fix it a few times to where we literally put tape around the base of the stick and touched it on the floor and we laid a flat piece of tape over the tape that was on the floor to help hold it down but this ended up being a really fun game the kids absolutely loved it we ended up getting a spongebob ball and we threw it through the windows like take spongebob home and it became the pineapple toss game so here is the pineapple toss game. You can see here my niece Callie in action throwing the SpongeBob ball through one of the windows and my daughter cheating, going up to the window and literally just throwing it through it because she wasn't getting it anywhere close. But also we were able to take family pictures, putting our heads in it. It was so much fun. The kids had a blast with this. It was probably, it was worth all the work I had to put into it. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Bye.